Hello friends, this video on magnetic effects of current part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So that was a, a brief idea about magnets. I mean what are magnets and what are the basic properties of magnet. So now we will talk about magnetic field. What do we mean by magnetic field? Well as I mentioned before, it is nothing but the region around the magnet where the magnetic where the magnetic exerts its influence where the magnet exerts its influence that means if you place some object beyond this magnetic field it will not get for example you have one bar magnet placed on a table you have some nails which are placed within the magnetic field of that magnet. So what happens? The nails get attracted by the magnet. But if you place those nails far away from the magnet, far beyond the scope of its magnetic field, in that case the nails will not be attracted by the magnet. So magnetic field is nothing but the region around the magnet where the magnet exerts its influence. So now an experiment was performed. What was done? A bar magnet was taken as you can see in this picture. A bar magnet was taken and lot of iron filings was taken. What was iron filings? Iron filings are nothing but you can imagine them as dust of iron. Right? So normally a magnet attracts iron. You would have seen those iron nails and all when you bring them near a magnet it gets attracted. So some those small iron filings that means powder iron iron in powdered form almost. So you take those small all those iron filings and you place them over that bar magnet. So what was seen that the iron filings arranged themselves in a specific pattern as you can see in this figure. So if you look at this figure very carefully you see that the iron filings have arranged them in a specific pattern. I mean by looking at this it, it seems as if everything is originating from here. Again everything is originating from here. Some, something of that sort right. That, that kind of uh, impression you get when you look at this. But this, this was something which was actually performed. If you perform it even now you can see this kind of pattern. So a pattern of this kind was found and when it was concluded that these, this pattern which is demonstrated by these iron filings, this represent the magnetic field. And each of these lines which represent the magnetic field, that they are known as magnetic field lines. So we will talk about that. So it was seen that magnetic field is a vector quantity. That means I think you are aware of a scalar quantity and vector quantity. Scalar quantity is something which has only magnitude, no direction. And when I talk about a vector quantity, it has both magnitude. So when I talk about a vector quantity, it has magnitude plus direction. So that means if I talk about magnetic field, I not only talk about the strength of the magnetic field, that is how strong the magnetic field is, but I also need to talk about the direction of magnetic field. So, in order to visualize magnetic field, came into picture magnetic field lines. So, magnetic field lines were nothing but they are also sometimes called as field lines. So, magnetic field lines are a form of visual realization of magnetic field. That how magnetic field looks like. I mean, none of us can see magnetic field, right? It is just the region around the magnet where you can feel that magnetic effect. But in order to uh, it, uh, virtually realize it, how it looks like, magnetic field lines were represented. And from where did magnetic field lines originated? It originated from that iron filing experiment. When it was found that those iron filings arranged themselves in these specific patterns. So then it was told that, okay, so this means that there are lines in this form. The same thing was drawn like this. So there are lines in this form and these lines represent a magnetic field right and these lines are known as magnetic field lines or field lines correct now what was the direction of these magnetic field lines the, the convention for the direction was taken as the mag direction was from north pole to south pole outside the magnet that means it always originated from north pole and it terminated to the south pole and what about inside the magnet? Inside the magnet it was assumed that it went like this. That means these lines formed closed loops. 
that means it went it originated from north terminated in south and inside it the direction was from south to north similarly this line also so all these lines were like this so that means outside the magnet the direction of the magnetic field lines was from north to south and inside the magnet the direction was from south to north so how did people conclude i mean how did people arrive at this conclusion that was also found experimentally for that also one experiment was performed and then people concluded this fact so we will look at that also so till now what did we study what is magnetic field it is region around the magnet where you can feel the effects of the magnet magnetic field is a vector quantity in order to define magnetic field you need the magnitude as well as direction now how do we represent magnetic field magnetic fields are represented in the form of magnetic field lines so what how the magnetic field lines look like for a bar magnet for a bar magnet they are closed curves closed continuous curves and it was first demonstrated by an experiment performed with bar magnet and iron filings so now let us look at the direction of the magnetic field lines experimentally so how was this direction found out so what was done was that a magnetic a bar magnet was taken and it was placed like this as you can see here right then a small magnetic needle which i was talking about magnetic needle or compass magnetic compass whatever you call it this compass was taken and it was placed at this position so let us call this position as position 1 so when you place this needle in this position what will happen what will the needle do the needle will point itself in the north south direction right so since this is the north pole of the bar magnet so the south pole of the needle came here and the north pole here because unlike poles attract each other right so this is how the needle align itself now these two points north and south were marked i mean this entire experiment was being performed on a white sheet of paper i mean on a big white sheet of paper you place a bar magnet and then you place a compass needle like this and you point mark its south and north points now you remove the needle from here and try to place the needle in on the next point in such a way that the new south is same as the old north that means the new south pole should lie here and the north pole should lie somewhere here so you have to place the needle here in such a way that now again the south pole points at this north pole let us suppose if this was my needle so the needle will point like this so this is my north and this is my south right now again i place the needle here in such a way that it points like this so that is my purpose i want its south pole to be here i mean i want the south pole now should be equal to the old north pole again you place the needle in such a way that the south pole should point towards this new north pole right so like that it was observed that a pattern like this was formed so from this it was concluded that the magnetic lines of force are of this pattern so this experiment once again confirmed the um, shape of the magnetic field lines and also their direction right so from here it was finally concluded that magnetic lines of force are magnetic field lines are closed continuous curves they originate in north pole and they terminate in south pole So now let us look at some of the properties of magnetic field lines. The first property being they form continuous closed loops. Continuous loops because they arise from north pole go to south pole and again inside also they go from south pole to north pole. So that means this is a continuous loop. This is also a closed loop. So that is why it is said that they form closed continuous loops. tangent to magnetic field line at a given point specifies the direction of the net magnetic field at that point so now these are my magnetic field lines so what about the magnitude of the magnetic field at any point let us suppose if i say what is the magnetic field at this point or what is the magnetic field at this point so how do you calculate the magnitude of magnetic field at a specific point it is nothing but when i talk about magnetic field at a specific point a tangent drawn to this curve 
So tangent to this magnetic field line gives the direction of net magnetic field at this point. That means if I talk about this point, what is the tangent at this point? This is the tangent. So that means this is the direction of magnetic field at this point. Similarly, if I talk about this point, I draw a tangent here. So the direction of magnetic field at this point is this one. So similarly, if you draw for any point on a magnetic field line, draw a tangent and that becomes the direction of net magnetic field at that point. Greater number of field lines per unit area, stronger the magnetic field. Let us suppose there is one magnetic field. Let us suppose we have two magnets. So now let us suppose in this magnet, the field lines look like this. That means the field lines are extremely crowded. There is another magnet for which the field lines look somewhat like this. So what is the difference between the two? In this, the field lines are very crowded. That means the number of field lines per unit area is more. So if, great, if the number of field lines is more, that means the magnetic field is stronger. So in this case, we say, say that this, is, this magnet is a stronger magnet than this magnet. So 1 is a stronger magnet than 2. So that means greater number of magnetic field lines per unit area means that the magnetic field is stronger. That is the strength of the magnet is more. Magnetic field lines never intersect. So as I mentioned these magnetic field lines always form closed continuous loops and they never intersect. Now why, why don't they ever intersect? They never intersect because as I mentioned in this second point that whenever we look at any magnetic field line at any point, the tangent which is drawn to that point, that is the direction of magnetic field at that point, right? Now let us assume that two magnetic lines of force, two magnetic field lines intersect. Now what will happen at the point of intersection? What is the direction of net magnetic field at this point? You will try to draw a tangent to the magnetic field line. Now if you look at this magnetic field line, this is the tangent. If you look at this magnetic field line, this is the tangent. So that means you have two tangents for the same point. That means you have two direction of magnetic field at the same point. Is that possible? No, that is never possible. Right? Because at a particular point, there can be only one direction of net magnetic field. So this is the reason why magnetic field lines can never intersect. Because if magnetic field lines intersect, then at the point of intersection, there will be two directions of magnetic field which is not possible and therefore magnetic field lines never intersect. So these are some of the very important properties of magnetic field lines. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.